John Patterson. I know there must be hundreds of answers to this, but how hard is it to reconnect to non-Scientologists after leaving the cult? Well, it totally depends, as you said in your question. Um, it's, it's totally context-specific to the relationship, how long you've been away, how hard it is to reconnect, what the, what the circumstances were of the original disconnection, right? Did you just fall out of communication with them, or was it, you know, screw you, Scientology is the best thing ever, and I don't ever want to talk to you again, right? That, that'll be a hard one to reconnect with, okay? So, um, so it depends on a lot of factors, but... Within my own experience and what I've seen from others, I would say it's not really that hard. And in fact, a lot of people are so happy when you reconnect with them after coming out. And they were like, oh, God, I thought I lost you to that cult or, you know, you were gone for so long and they're so happy that you, you know, came to your senses or whatever. And, you know, I don't particularly appreciate that kind of language, to be honest with you, from most people. Um, we don't like being told that, you know, thank God we finally realized how stupid we were being. Not helpful. Not a helpful statement. <laughs> um, you know, oh, thank God you finally, you know, woke up. You know, okay. Uh, yeah, don't, don't particularly need to hear that. Um, so that can make it difficult. <laughs> but as far as, um, you know, as far as trust issues or as far as, you know, ability to reconnect, um, I haven't found it hard. I've reconnected with people I've known all the way back to high school, um, old People that I knew in Scientology back in the day who have left. After I left, I reconnected with some of them. So in many ways, it was just as easy as sending an email or making a phone call. Um, but in other ways, it's been really hard. And those ways are making close friends with people, following post post cult after you know after leaving the cult. It's not like well, it's not like it's easy. And it's not like it's easy to trust people. It's not easy to extend, um, yeah, trust, I guess. Um, and you have to reframe a lot of stuff. You got to start, you know, when you come, when you first come out of these, uh, of any of these groups, um, the adjustment period is just so damn difficult because it's hard to tell. Um, well, it's hard to tell who's your friend and who's your not, and who's not when a whole bunch of people just disconnected from you or shunned you or told you how wrong and horrible and evil and awful you are. You know, you're not particularly keen on on getting involved with people again right away. You know, and for some people that extends for a really long time, and uh, for a, you know, for a few, that means that those trust issues never get resolved. So that kind of sucks. But for me. Um, it took years to get over the trust issues. I, I bring this up often because, it, for me, that was a big thing. Um, after, I, after I felt like I had been betrayed so badly by Scientology, uh, I, th I think it's pretty understandable why I might feel a little bit skittish about going all in with somebody else or some other group, right? And that's why it took me years to form, you know, substantial meaningful relationships uh, romantically, you know, and now, of course, I've got my wonderful wife, Melissa, who I'm totally and madly deeply in love with. Uh, but that took time to form up. And I, you know, the other thing is that um, one of the habits that you form in a destructive cult, and I think this is fairly universal across the spectrum with cults, is fast friendships. You know, you're so, you feel so tied in with all the other people in your group, because you have this really strong commitment and common ground based on those commitments, that there is an almost automatic trust factor between the group members in a destructive cult. And of course, it also helps that they're small groups, even even cells or or little tiny groups, and uh, and so it's easier to, to to be closer in those kind of situations. But um, but that, that extension of trust that happens inside the cult, once you realize that that's all built on a, on a bed of lies and, mis and, and misconceptions and, and half-truths and that kind of thing, then you know that there's all this uh, nonsense going on underneath that. Once the sort of trap doors open and you go, ah. um, well, like I said, you're just not so quick to want to extend that trust again.
and I think that's understandable. So that for me has been the major barrier that I'm that's coming to mind obviously right now as I'm answering this. There probably were other barriers that were that were difficult. Oh, communication. Um, you know, when I first got out of Scientology and for a very long time, I would overshare radically. And um, and I learned, I had to learn to kind of tone it down a little bit, right? Like in other words, when I first met somebody, I'd be telling them all kinds of stuff about myself that they weren't necessarily ready to hear yet, right? Because I was so used to being such an open book in Scientology that it was just a habit that when I meet people, I just start, you know, tell them everything. So um, so I had to kind of unlearn that also um, and learn when to, you know, I had to learn a whole different set of social cues and mannerisms, right? Because people in a cult are very different from people outside a cult as far as how they carry themselves, how they how they talk, how they interact with others, how they form relationships. I mean, you kind of get the idea. It's, there's a lot to it. But um, anyway, I hope that gives you some idea of what the difficulties are in adjusting when you leave.